humerus it is a bone it is a long bone which has upper and lower end and shaft in the upper end there is head and this is greater tubercle lesser tubercle inter tubercular sulcus this is deltoid tuberosity and the borders of humerus or anterior border medial border and lateral border this is medial epicondyle which is more prominent than lateral epicondyle and this is medial supracondylar ridge and lateral supracondylar ridge this is capitulum and this is called radial fossa the capitulum of the humerus articulates with the head of the radius so here we can see the concave surface in the superior part of the head of the radius so during complete flexion of elbow joint the head of the radius sits in a fossa just above the capitulum so the fossa is called as radial fossa and this is trochlea so the bone which articulates is ulna so the trochlear surface of ulna articulates with the trochlea of humerus during complete flexion the coronoid process sits in a fossa just above the trochlea so the fossa is called coronoid fossa and during complete extension of elbow joint this process that is the olecranon process sits in the fossa so the fossa in the humerus is called olecranon fossa now the attachments so the head of the humerus articulates with the glenoid cavity of scapula to form shoulder joint just below the head we have neck the axillary nerve winds around the neck of the humerus so this is called greater tubercle supraspinatus infraspinatus teres minor and lesser tubercle subscapularis in the intertubercular sulcus lateral lip pectoralis major medial lip teres major floor latissimus dorsi the content of the sulcus is long head of tendon of long head of biceps so to the deltoid tuberosity deltoid insertion just opposite to that in the anteromedial surface is the coracobrachialis so at the level of insertion of coracobrachialis there are few changes the humerus bone itself changes its shape above its cylindrical below its triangular in shape the brachio uh, the brachialis muscle takes origin here we have the median nerve which crosses the brachial artery from lateral to medial and be the medial most content of cubital fossa here we have the ulna nerve pierces the medial intermuscular septum and runs behind the medial epicondyle of humerus so the ulnar nerve is related below the medial epicondyle the radial nerve pierces lateral intermuscular septum and comes anteriorly to be the lateral most content in the cubital fossa so these are the major changes at the level of insertion of coracobrachialis to the posterior surface of humerus there is a groove called spiral groove and just above the spiral groove the lateral head of triceps takes origin below the spiral groove medial head of triceps takes origin to the medial epicondyle common flexor origin to the lateral epicondyle common extensor origin just above common flexor origin pronata teres to the lateral side extensor carpi radialis longer than brachio radialis so common fracture site at the humerus is neck of the humerus in the spiral groove in the medial supracondylar ridge so if it involves median nerve and brachial artery it results in opmans ischemic contracture moving on to radius it is a lateral bone in the forearm it has upper end lower end and shaft so what are the features head neck radial tuberosity so when we trace downwards it is the oblique line which becomes anterior border and ends in the styloid process of radius this is medial border or interosseous border just opposite to anterior border is posterior border between them is lateral surface and this is anterior surface behind we have posterior surface 
here in the lower end we can see the styloid process of radius and behind posteriorly there are some elevations called Lister's tubercle dorsal tubercle of Lister so it forms grooves which allows the tendons of extensor muscles and inferiorly we can see two facets one triangular and one quadrilateral one for scaphoid laterally and medially the lunate so these two couples articulate with the radius to form radiocouple joints to the head is the attachment of annular ligament to the neck quadrate ligament radial tuberosity biceps brachii muscle to the oblique line flexor digitorum superficialis to the lateral surface supinator pronata teres and brachioradialis to the anterior surface it is flexor pollicis longus and to the posterior surface it is abductor pollicis longus and extensor pollicis brevis that is the first compartment of extensor muscles so when we fall on the outstretched hand the lower part of the radius displaces dorsally and backwards so what happens the styloid process of radius it comes at the level of styloid process of ulna or above the styloid process of ulna which results in a deformity called dinner folk deformity so this is all about the lateral bone forearm now moving on to the medial bone that is ulna here we can see the head of the radius articulates with the radial fossa of ulna and head of the ulna articulates with the ulnar facet of radius so these two form superior and inferior radio ulnar joints so this is the olecranon process coronoid process between them is trochlea fossa and this is ulnar tuberosity and there is a a uh, crest called spinata crest this is interosseous border anterior border posterior border and here we can see head of the ulna it's styloid process of ulna so here normally we can see the uh, uh, styloid process of radius is 1 cm below the styloid process of ulna in case of colis fracture it comes at the level or just above the ulna styloid process what are the attachments to the tip here we have triceps brachii posteriorly we have a triangular shaped muscle called anconius and here to the ulnar tuberosity brachialis muscle uh, there is a crest here called supinator crest supinator takes origin to the anterior surface flexor digitorum profundus to the posterior surface extensor pollicis abductor pollicis longus extensor pollicis longus and extensor indices so these are the muscular attachments to the radius ulna below we have pronata quadratus and coming to the skeleton of hand we can see couples metacouples and phalanges so there are five metacouples and 14 phalanges what are couples eight couples scaphoid lunate triquetral and pisiform which is a sesamoid bone then trapezium trapezoid capitate which is the largest couple bone then hamate this projection in the hamate is called hook of hamate so here we can see from lateral to medial scaphoid lunate triquetral pisiform trapezium trapezoid capitate and hamet so what we must know here so these are the five metacarpals from lateral to medial and these are phalanges so this is first copper metacarpal joint between trapezium and base of the first metacarpal other things scaphoid uh, can undergo fracture which results in avascular necrosis next bone lunate it is a common bone to dislocate anteriorly here pisiform which is a sesamoid present in the tendon of flexor carpi ulnaris 
then capitate which is the largest bone here when we see the fifth metacarpal fracture at the neck of the fifth metacarpal is called boxes fracture